The following episode is explicit and is intended for mature audiences. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. Hey everybody, it's Nathaniel Avila reporting from Dallas County, and who, who's here today? Uh, uh, also with Clara Avila, also reporting from Dallas County. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, all right, so um, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Okay, what? well first off, let's introduce what the show is, because that's how you do it, that's the format. Oh, okay. What right, do, what welcome do here to episode three of The Devil in the Details. This is episode four, actually. Oh, is this is episode four? Yeah. Dang, that's crazy. Welcome to episode four of Devil in, in the, de- the Devil in the Details, our podcast where we talk about all things Hell of a Boss and Has Been Hotel. Uh, so today, what are we going to be talking about, Nathaniel? Last episode we talked about Baxter, and this episode we're going to be discussing... We're going to talk about Valentino. We're going to talk about Valentino. Mm -hmm. That guy you love to hate. And hate to love. (laughs) Let's get started. So let's get, like, before we get started, let's talk about the more recent developments within the Okay, yeah. One is that... First, re, uh, re, Brendan Rogers recently did an interview mm-hmm. saying that Hell of a Boss is going to end at season four, and they know how they're going to end it. Yes, which is good. I like to hear it. That's good. Yeah, um, I think that's a good. That's a good stopping point. Yeah, although I believe Vivzi has gone on to say that she wants Has Been Hotel to go on for as long as possible. Yeah. So, what do you think about that? Um, well, personally, and this is purely a matter of personal opinion and how I feel about show length, I don't like it when things go on for too long. I prefer things to stay between, like, four seasons. Five is really pushing it for me. I mean, Breaking Bad was five seasons. I never watched Breaking Bad. Mm -hmm. But it's considered to be, like, a masterpiece. It's considered to be a masterpiece. I, I, I just, I worry about, you know things that go on for too long. I like it when things have an ending. I get really excited for when things end, which is really weird, I know. But I think that if Hasman Hotel were to go on for like a predicted like 10, 12 seasons, I, I just don't know. Yeah. I, I might start getting a little like, like obviously I love the show, you know, and I've like been around in the fandom for a little bit, probably not as long as a lot of other people, um, obviously, because I don't know a lot about the old stuff. But, um, I don't know. I'm just not the kind of person that gets excited about something being 12 seasons. Yeah, I mean, I kind of don't... What I, I'm afraid if, if what's going to happen is that it's going to become, like, a, like a Simpsonization of the show. Yeah, like, where it kind eventually, of, uh, <laughs> down the of... line, it loses sight of what it is. Yeah. You know, same thing happens to a lot of shows that go on for, like, a really long time. You know, a lot of cartoons, Simpsons, Family Guy, you know, all these ones that have been going on for like 30, 16, 20 seasons. Yeah, Grey's Anatomy also is like one of those. Yeah. Uh, Mm. Supernatural. We all know how that ended, you guys. Yeah. Supernatural ended like season 15. Season 16. 16 16 seasons. I'm pretty sure. It might be 15. I always forget. The point is, it was a very, very long time, maybe way too long. Way too long. Where it kind long. of outstayed its welcome. Yeah. And it, you, you, you just hate, you would hate to see that happen to Has Been Hotel. Because yeah. what I like, I wish I would have like a finite season, finite number of seasons, like a very good, like mm-hmm. digestible number of seasons where new people can come in and know that there's going to be an end. Like they can, yeah. like, it's more easily digestible. And like, it's like, unlike, like if it isn't like a one piece type thing, where there's like a thousand episodes <laughs> that really determine, det- like deters new they viewers. They still haven't found the one piece. Yeah. I don't think they're ever going to find the one piece. It's still going on, you guys. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And also I like that there's like a finite number of episodes, finite number of seasons. And that's the thing. That's yeah. the beginning. That's the middle. And that's the end. And then we can go from there as like a fandom who can explore other things yeah because this is the contained a number of of lore that we're given yeah and Um, obviously you know like there's a lot of people who do want to see a lot of content for you know what they love but there's got to be a point where you're like okay this is it and this is good you know like I'm happy with what we have. Obviously, you know, sometimes you want more, but if you get more, you might end up being disappointed. Yeah. So a- another thing I was gonna say, like uh, Game of Thrones. Remember that? Oh, Game of Thrones. I n- I didn't watch it, but <laughs> yeah. it was considered to be a masterpiece for the first 
five seasons five or seasons. so. And then by the eighth and final season, people are like, this is garbage. garbage. Like, this is a garbage the show. People, I know, I have friends who are afraid to watch shows that are done by the showrunners of, that did, um... Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. What else have they done? I don't think they've done anything else. Oh, so, um, there's a Netflix, uh, show that's a sci-fi show. I don't remember. The six, the, the three body problems. Oh, the three body problems, yeah. Done by the showrunners. That was them? Okay. That was them. Um, and I was, like, talking to my friend, and I was like, hey, we should watch this together, because it looked really interesting. And he looked it up, and he realized that it was by the people of Game of Thrones, and he was like, I don't think... I'm really concerned about it yeah. now because I don't want to... Yeah. I know what happened. They're, the showrunners are called... They're collectively called D&D. &D. That's their name. Really? That's their, that's their duo name. It's very interesting. Yeah. Back on topic. Um, also, like, other shows like... Um, I was going to say... Like, oh, The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. Remember? It was, like, the biggest thing on television for a while. Mm -hmm. And then as, like, it goes along, I'm like, is that... Like, and then I look at it and it's like, that thing is still on the is air? Is it still going on? Is it still on the air? Like, I, I forgot all about it. And, like... And maybe, maybe it takes a certain type of fan, like, a really, like, zealous, like, super fan mm -hmm. to continue to love something that goes on for 20 seasons. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, is it, does this really warrant, like, five spinoffs? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just not that kind of person. Five no, obviously, like if series? you're the kind of person who would absolutely love to see 12 seasons of Has Been Hotel, more power to you. That's just not me. Yeah. Because um, I think if, like, that amount of seasons for Has Been Hotel, I think that kind of does a disservice to the series. Potentially. Um, that's, def that's just not something that we can know for sure. Then again, it is only 20-minute episodes, and if each episode is, like, eight... If each season is, like, eight episodes, that's, like, half of a season, technically. Right. But let, let's see what Amazon Prime does in, mm -hmm. in 824. But then again, like... Uh, I don't know. That kind of that yeah. just worries me. Yeah. So um, I also got another thing. Okay. If we were to do a dream cast of Has Been Hotel, what would it be? What? Oh, ooh. Like a head cannon or whatever. That is a really bad question to ask me without having told me to prepare for that beforehand because oh, I, cool. I do not know actors' names. And I don't remember their faces. I I, I got some. Let, let me let's hear your dream cast. So for me, it for Charlie, okay. we would cast Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick, that's a really good choice. Anna Kendrick, and she does have that very like Disney princess like mm -hmm. singing voice, yeah. which is key for Charlie. She played, I think she played Cinderella and in into Into the Woods. She does play Cinderella and in Into the Woods, yes. Yes, and she was also in Pitch Perfect, so we know mm -hmm. she can sing. She, we know she can sing. Yeah, and then for Baggy, we're gonna keep Stephanie Beatrice. Oh, oh you've got to. And then Alistair, I would cast Tom Hiddleston. Really? Yes. Tom Hiddleston for Alistair. Yeah. I guess because of that, the whole like Loki vibe, right? Right. I, has he ever sung before? I don't know. Oh. I can't remember if he's done anything like music wise. I know he dated Taylor Swift. But that right? doesn't really mean anything in terms of his musical abilities. Let me see. Um. Um. I don't know. I don't. I don't think. He, uh, you don't think he's done anything. Uh, if if you guys know if he's done something, let us know in the comments. Because honestly, I'm uh, <laughs> uh, I'm really curious if you can find anything. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. W what else? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Neil Patrick Harris as Angel Dust. Neil Patrick Harris as Angel Dust. Okay. He was in. He was. He was. He could sing. No, I know he can sing, but it's just an interesting choice. Yeah. All he needs to do is just plug his nose, and it'll it'll sound just like him. <laughs> That's terrible. Is this supposed to make me feel better? Stop it. That's how he talks. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's me, Angel Dust. It sounds like Kev you sound like Jennifer Coolidge. I oh, it's me, Angel Dust. It's me, Angel Dust. I'm gonna oh. do something sexy. Oh, sex joke. Oh, sex wow. Joke. Sex joke. Sex joke. <laughs> <laughs> Got a sap, I got an appetite for a sampling. I don't, I don't even know if anybody can hear you if you do that. Okay. They sound just like Blake Roman. No, you do not. Is that was that Blake Roman who was just here? Yes, it's me. It's me, Blake Roman. Blake Roman. Have you ever Angel thought? Dust. Have you ever thought about the Roman Empire? Stop it right now. <laughs> who else? Oh, um, keep going. Ron Perlman as Husk. Ron Perlman. Who is that? 
Um, he played. I know he played Hellboy in, in the Hellboy series. I've never seen Hellboy. You know. I, you guys are gonna learn that I've never seen a lot of things. We so. got Kristen Shaw is nifty. Who's that? She played. Uh, she was in Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers. But I, she Who played, did she play in Bob's Burgers? The, the lady with the bun, the bunny ears girl. I forgot her name. Oh, Louisa. Louisa. She played Louisa. Ooh, that's a good one. See, I feel like, um, I don't know, Kimiko Glenn. I feel like she'd be a good choice. Kimiko Glenn? You mean the actual person who plays Nifty? Oh, is the, she actually Nifty? Yeah, that she, Kimiko Glenn plays Nifty in the show. Like, oh. she's the official voice actress. I'm stupid. No, you're not stupid. Yeah, I am. No, you're not. I think Kamiko Glenn could play actual Nifty. Yeah. See? <laughs> In real life. Real life Nifty. Kamiko yeah. Glenn. You're voiced by Kamiko Glenn. Oh, uh, you see, the thing is, is that I knew that, and I was excited about it because I love Kamiko Glenn. And you like I, watching her in I just Orange forgot. The New Black? I didn't watch Orange is the New Black. Oh. But I loved her in Centaur World. Okay. So, yeah, um, Serpentius, I would cast Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill, okay. You, you know what he does? I think he would be is, really good. Was he in Star Wars? Yeah, he was Luke Skywalker. Okay, he was Luke Skywalker, okay. But he, he became quite a big uh, voice actor. Yeah. And he, you probably know, he played the Joker in a lot of animated Batman shows. And yes. in the video games, and in the Arkham Asylum yes. games. Yes, yes. Yes, I so, did hear, hear about that, yes. I know that Vivzy wanted Mark Hamill to play Vox, oh. but he, she had to go for Christian Borle instead. Mm. Well, Christian Borle is a great choice anyways. Okay. We got Katie Killjoy. I would cast Tara Strong. Tara Strong. All right. And Tom Trench is John Mulaney. John Mulaney. Yeah, yeah that could work. Okay. Yeah, he could do that. Okay, that's it. That's the that's that's my that's my head cannon. That's your head cannon. That's your fan cast. That's my fan cast. Very interesting. Yeah. Very good. Now, choices. where is my Oscar for best casting? Um, nowhere. Gone. Oh. They gave it to where's, somebody where's else. Where's my Emmy for best casting? Oh. They gave it. They gave it to um. Vivzy Pop herself. She did the casting. She did the casting. They gave it to her. <laughs> but like, speaking of which, like I think, well, actually, I, I was gonna say that Hasbin Hotel got snubbed for the Emmys. But if I step back and look at season one objectively, I would say that it was just okay. Okay. I'm... Who did what, who did they lose to in the Emmys again? Um, it was I think it was The Simpsons. The Simpsons. Uh... Um, it, I know Simpsons was one of the uh, nominees. Uh... Let me look. Let me look up. Um, the I, Emmys. I feel like they should have won at least something. You think at least got for, like for voice acting? At or? least because there's, there's some really good stuff in there. I, I, <laughs> and like I understand that. You know, for, like, a show that's been around for a really long time, like The Simpsons. Again, I don't know if it's true or not. I'm waiting on Nathaniel to confirm. Um, oh, they know The Simpsons did not win. Oh, okay. But they, they were, were nominated. Against, they were up against The Simpsons. I think Bob's Burgers also. Bob's Burgers was also... It was nominated? Nominated. Well, who won? That's what I'm asking. Don't tell me who was nominated. Oh, tell me the, who won. Let me see who won. Let me see who won. Who won the Emmy first, whatever it is that uh, we're talking about right now. It doesn't say. It doesn't say who won the Emmys? For what 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 category is this? This is for animated. Maybe I'm not looking like at the right Like best animated show? Wait, let me look this Could up. Could you look up who won the Emmys for best animated show in 20 2024? 2024. In 2024. Like that's what you should have been looking up in the first place because that's what I asked animated. about who won, not who was nominated. Animated. Come on. Yeah, type a little faster. Let's go. We don't have a lot of time here. The people are waiting Anim for anime, us. Animation. And anime I can't vamp on my own, you know. Animation it's really hard for me to do winner. that. You know, like, hey, sure. I, okay, I, okay, okay, okay. It was, there we go. Uh, it lost to, well, the one that won was Blue Eye Samurai. Oh, Blue Eye Samurai. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it was Blue Eye. It won Blue Eye Samurai one, mm -hmm. and then it went against Bob's Burgers, mm -hmm. Scavengers Reign, mm -hmm. The Simpsons, and X Men ninety seven. Ah. And well, I heard Blue Eye Samurai was really good. So yeah. So yeah. Plus, 
it, I believe Blue Eye Samurai is a lot more of like a serious show. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Academy tends to like serious things more. Mm-hmm. Like, even even so, like, we was, there's also, um, I mean, like, we also got other shows like uh, Simpsons and Bob's Burgers. Yeah, but they like, didn't win. They didn't win, no. The serious show won. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. I I would think see, if, if Fibsy steps up her game for season two, I think we can get it. Because, I mean, there's still, like, it's still, it still has those season one bit. I guess the Academy wants them to, like, earn their stripes a little bit. But True. I don't know. It has only, but, I mean, it's still great that it got nominated in it, its it, first season. It did not get nominated. Oh, it didn't get nominated? No, I said it got snubbed. Like, it did not get nominated. Oh, you, I don't know what these words mean. <laughs> Sorry, it did not get nominated. Um, mainly because wow. I think if you step... Completely, ste- completely misled me there. Sorry, Clara. It's okay. But like, um, but yeah, because I think because of the pacing issues and the quick, the quickness of it, um, that might have done a disservice to it in the Academy's eyes. But I, I don't know. Eh. Honestly, the Academy is kind of meh. Okay, so let's let's get into the meat and the potatoes. That's right. Let's talk about the topic that we're here for in the first place, which is Valentino. So Valentino, who is he? Your favorite character? I really don't like Valentino. Why? I mean. Is it because of the abusive stuff? Well, obviously. Duh. And the, and the mis- manipulation stuff? Yes, of course. I will say, killer design. Okay. So let's 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 talk about it. So let's yes. speak of the design. Let's talk about the design. Okay, we're going to talk about the design first. And we're going to start with the actual official canon. Yes. Within the show. Yes. So, Valentino is a moth demon. Mm-hmm. And he is strutting around at a whopping 10 feet tall. 10 feet. When I read that, I was like, whoa. Which makes sense because he towers over Angel, he who's really, seven. He does. Who's seven who's foot. Who's seven foot. So, now, he big has, man. Now, he has lavender skin, cerise pink eyes that lack pupils or irises, you know, like a moth. Mm-hmm. And uh, Valentino rocks a pair of gold-trimmed heart-shaped sunglasses that scream, I'm too cool for you. They really scream, you know, I'm a manipulative abuser. Okay. Now, his <laughs> grin is full of sharp cerise teeth with a fe- with a single golden fang. And let's not forget his long cerise tongue. Yeah. And we'd like to point out that quite a few of Valentino's workers also have a gold tooth, including Angel Dust. Right. So Valentino got a flu- has a got he's got a fluffy white neck fur with That's tiny right. red hearts, and he flaunts his weight and long his height with long black heeled boots. That's right. Got a he's already tall. He's got to make himself taller. Yeah. <laughs> so he sports a bald head with moth like antenna. That's right. One, let's go. Let's shout out to the baldies out there. Okay. <laughs> One is a black and white heart-shaped feather, and the other is a smaller... Is, 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 is yeah, smaller. it looks like a feather, mm-hmm. but it's an antenna. And the other one is smaller, and it doesn't have the um, white parts. Right. So Valentino's extra set of arms above the hips add to his unique charm, and his black hands and forearms mimic gloves, while the rest of his arms show off his lavender skin. Mm-hmm. Now, lavender... But no, Valentino's got a pair of large red moth wings with zebra print fur along the edges, He's which he often wraps around himself like a fabulous floor-length coat. Yeah, super fab. His coat is decked out with white fur at the wrists, black and white stripped fur trim, and a heart-shaped design on the back. You know, I, I think it's a really cool idea having his wings be his coat okay but like how does he get his arms around that you know does he have oh what what do you mean has arms around it yeah because it, the the sleeves are part of the coat oh which yeah. are his wings oh yeah so how did how did he do that you know what i, I mean i guess it's all i guess it's that overlord animation magic, magic. <laughs> this overlord magic that scene in uh masquerade where you know charlie almost hits the fire Mm -hmm. and well she does set fire she doesn't almost do it but she sets fire and he like unfolds his wings and he goes i was like oh my gosh his wings are his coat i didn't know that that was super cool to me it's kind of funny how they thought that that would put out the fire but it would actually ban it it would actually fan the flames because you know you add oxygen 
mm-hmm. to fire, it gets bigger. Yeah. But I guess well, because he also like did like that puff of pink smoke. Mm-hmm. So I assume that's what actually put out the flames because yeah. that's like part of his powers. But we'll get to that later. Yeah, we will. Um, so yeah, his uh, his coat is actually held together by a gold chain and heart shaped brooch. Mm-hmm. Now for accessories, Valentino has heart shaped nipples. <laughs> With gold piercings and chains, and a red top hat with an asymmetrical zebra printed hat band, and a chest exposing dark gray shirt under his coat. What? I love how the nipples are included in his <laughs> accessories. Yeah, but it's his design. It's his design. He's, he's, equipped, designed, he's, he's, design. he's equipped with heart shaped nipples. He's equipped with heart shaped nipples. Yeah, so. Um, his, uh, his white dress pants are cl- cinched with a black belt featuring a golden heart-shaped buckle. Mm, all about hearts. Oh, yeah, he's very heart-oriented. I was checking the battery. Oh. So, and just when you think he can't get any more extra, he reveals he's got fishnet stockings. That's right. Fishnet stockings underneath those pants. On the coat, yeah. Sometimes he swaps them for a black miniskirt and knee-high heeled boots, Pro- proving that he's always ready to steal the show. So, um, he actually had a different look That's previously. Right. That's right. He had a, yeah, he was still all about making, like, his antenna were identical. Yep. Resembling a large white feathers and black hard stripes. Mm-hmm. He didn't have any sunglasses. Mm-mm. So his cerise pink eyes were on full display, along with his, reg- which he had r- regular teeth. He didn't have a golden fang. Really? Mm-hmm. Now, his coat is still there, but it lacked the fur trim and the wrists and wasn't a fluffy around the edges. Mm-hmm. Instead, it had a sleeker, more straightforward design. Mm-hmm. Valentino topped off his look with a red fedora instead of a top hat, complete with a zebra print band adding to the touch of boldness to his ensemble. Now, the rest of his outfit, he rocked white pants paired with a pink belt that featured a gold heart-shaped buckle. Same. Even without some of the flashier details he sports now, um, his earlier style show co- showcases flair for fashion and attention to detail. Yeah. So I, but I kind of like the new one. Better. I love the new one. The new one screams pimp, which is what he is. Yeah. Um, Partly, you know, this is one of the many things that he does in the industry. In the industry, but I lost my notes, but now I found him. I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Get on it, Nathaniel. Come on. So now. Valentino might look charming and suave on the outside, but he's actually very bad. That's right. He's bad to the bone. Yeah. So he's known as a level-headed... He's known to be as level-headed as his fellow overlord, Vox. Valentino often keeps his cool, especially in public settings like his studio. When he interacted with Charlie, he was all smiles and cordially... And, and cordiality. Yes. Um, although you could tell he was barely holding back his irritation, probably thinking about taking it out his employees, taking it out on his employees earlier, particularly Angel, Angel Dust. Dust. Now, this moth demon's charm is his bait, reeling in unsuspecting demons with promises of jobs in his studios. He frequents nightclubs scouting for new quote-unquote talent. Mm-hmm. And he's quite good at hiding his more violent psychi- psychotic tendencies until it's too late. As an abuser does. Mm-hmm. Once they're in his web, the real Valentino comes out, controlling, abusive, and narcissistic. Mm-mm-mm. He gets a kick out of pushing Angel's, Angel Dust's boundaries and doesn't seem to care about the trauma he inflicts. Nope. That's why he's the worst. Yeah. I think we should make ship, we should ship them together. I think that the people art. that do that have some serious issues <laughs> that they need to discuss with professionals. Did you? There was this one artist on Fiverr who does commissions, and one of her commissions was Baxter X Valentino. That is, honestly, I think that that's fine because they both sound terrible. Okay. At least the Baxter that we talked, the the non-canon Baxter <laughs> with the canon Valentino. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. They sound made for each other. They sound horrible together. So, now he's always surrounded by his group of employees. Val- Valentino flaunts his power and status with pride. Now, Faustis, who I think is one of the writers and producers yes. of, of Hasman Hotel, didn't hold back calling him a huge F-boy. That's right. Which is pretty spot on. Pretty now, spot on. Now, despite his toxic behavior, he's in a romantic relationship with Vox. On again, off again. Yeah, which just adds another layer of complexity. Now, Angel Dust has called him a psychopathic freak. Yes. I sold my soul to, to a, a psychopathic, psychopathic freak. freak. 
Uh, <laughs> don't next. you unique? No, that was Husk. That, that was Husk. That was that. Husk. You think that makes you unique or something like get that? Get out of here, man. Get out of here, man. Forget about it. You didn't say forget about it. Well, I'm just, I'm just riffing. Okay. So, now, it's hard to argue with that, yeah. Yeah. And Valentino is known for throwing massive tantrums whenever his employees, whom he, derog- who he doesn't like, step out of line. <laughs> yeah. Now, his temper is legendary. He's been known to throw things, rip demons apart, and generally make a scene. Mm-hmm. Now, this has led Vox to a point that such behavior could tarnish their image, especially when Valentino's rage spirals out of control. Even Valentino has his limits, though. He was genuinely shocked when Vox, usually the most composed of the two, snapped at him for suggesting they murder everyone at the hotel. Now, let's not forget about his fear of Nifty, whose creeper stalkerish and homicidal tendencies even made Valentino uncomfortable. That's right. In that episode where, what was that episode called? I don't remember the names of episodes very well. And then Angel Dust is like... But they're at the club, and mm -hmm. Nifty's like, ooh, being, you know, drunk. And uh, Valentino says something to her, and Angel's like, no! And then Nifty's like, I hate you! She rips out his fur. Yeah. And then Angel's like, I finished my arc just now (laughs) my character development is complete oh my gosh i mean like there's still plenty of stuff that he can like figure out and learn he's just you know that's that's this is part there's only so many things you can do i talked about this already but there's only so many things that you can do in an eight episode season where with 20 minutes you you gotta get from point a to point b it's gotta be fast no i think the unofficial lore version of how that went went down I think is better than what we got, which we'll we'll talk we'll about. We'll talk about that. Now, um, let's talk about his like his abilities first. Yes. His canon abilities. His canon abilities. Um, now he can he is very strong. Also, yes, he can slam doors so hard they knock over furniture. He's been known to tear demons apart with his bare hands. Which you know, we mentioned that before. Um, mm-hmm. It's said. In uh, the episode where we meet Box and Velvet. Um, it's Radio Killed the Video Star. Yeah, thank you. Radio Killed the Video Star, where all of them are introduced, the Vs. Um, and Velvet talks about how Val rips up one of her best models. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, he's also not shy about using his strength to abuse his employees. Notably Macy choking. Angel mo- dust. Yeah, with one hand. One hand. Picking him up, throwing him across the room. And he has four. And he has four. So if he can do that with one hand, you know. Now his moth wings aren't just for show either. They can create powerful gusts of wind, strong enough to put out large fires with a single flap, which we talked which about Which we talked earlier. about uh, earlier. But I think it wasn't necessarily the wings. I think it was the pink smoke. Yeah. Now Valentino's eyes have a re- faint red glow, especially in the dark. Adding to his eerie presence, his teeth and saliva can glow red as well, mm-hmm. per- particularly when he's in a sinister or perverted mood. <laughs> now, it's a creepy effect that definitely makes him stand out in the crowd. Now, with his extra set of arms, Valentino is a multitasking pro. He can sip a drink and decorate his gun simultaneously, right. showing off just how efficient he can be. Plus, he's got a unique ability called typhokinesis typhokinesis which lets him excel red heart-shaped smoke from his cigarettes right. now his smoke can twist into different shapes and even enter the bodies of other demons allowing valentino to control or torment them yes now this ability is highlighted in the addict music video mm-hmm. where he where his smoke creates various effects valentino in, can also form solid constructs out of his smoke like in Masquerade, he shaped it into a chain and manacles to bind Angel Dust. Yes. Demonstrating his dominance and control. So, yeah. yeah. And I believe there's also discussions about whether or not his smoke is potentially used as like a drug. Okay. Because we also see in the Attic music video, there's an excerpt at the end where Angel Dust is smoking a cigarette that has the same red smoke of Valentino. Is what do you think that implies? Uh, I think that implies that potentially maybe Valentino's smoke can be used as like a drug of some sort. That's what I said. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were insinuating that she, he was like controlling him with the smoke. No, I mean like in a way, yes. But it's like one of those things that's like it's hard to kick. You know, it's a drug. It's addictive. That's the, you know. All right. Okay, so... 
Like his um, smoke slash saliva or something <laughs> can be used as a drug. I don't know. Venom, I don't know. So, yeah, he's also proficient with weapons. Yes. Um, as shown in the prequel comic. You've seen, you've read the prequel I comic. I actually right? have read the prequel comic. Okay, Thank good. you very much. You're welcome. So, where he hits moving objects with impressive accuracy from notable distance, as mm-hmm. you know, since you've read the prequel comic. Yes. Like, as all real fans do. Yes. So, clearly, he's not someone you'd want to cross paths with no, in a shootout. No, and, and one and And he likes it when you read his prequel comic. Okay. Now... His charisma is another weapon in his arsenal. Mm-hmm. Valentino's flamboyant and vivacious charm makes him a master at persuasion, easily convincing others of his authority. This charm is key to this to his method of amassing power by getting others to sign away their souls through contracts. Like all overlords, Valentino owns the souls of those who sign, Sorry. as seen with Angel Dust, who signed with his real name and a contract to quote unquote work mm-hmm. for Valentino. However, these contracts aren't foolproof. There are loopholes, like Angel being free of Valentino's influence outside the studio, and Valentino does have the option to nullify the contract if he chooses. Yeah. Now, Valentino is also bilingual, fluently speaking both Spanish and English, which adds to his allure and ability to connect with a wider audience. Additionally, he's got a surprising artistic side. According yeah. to the Clock Tower Countdown to Premiere live stream. Valentino is a talented artist, That's showcasing right. his skills beyond the business and the supernatural realms. You, you've seen the Clock Tower content to premiere live stream. See, the thing is, is that there were a lot of live streams happening, and as much as I love watching videos that go on for two to four hours long, I'm not a super big fan of live stream videos. <laughs> I'm always on that kick. I'm like, what illegal thing are they doing today? Are you? That's that's really great. Yeah. Oh, geez, I can't wait to see what illegal thing they do next. Okay. Now, um, he's also a gifted uh, singer and exceptional dancer. Mm. Um, he's shown off in his talents in duets and dances with the Vox, proving that he's not all some talk and no action. <laughs> now, um, well, I mean, it's it's a musical. They're all great singers. Yeah. Now. Valentino's flair for style extends his choice of weaponry. Now, he boasts a collection of guns, each customized to reflect his unique aesthetic. One standout is his pink and zebra print revolver. That's right. Aptly named Money Shot. (laughs) Money Shot, of course it's called that. Now, this isn't any revolver. Valentino has gone the extra mile by decorating it with glue, gemstones, and glitter, making it as flashy as his personality. In Vid- Radio Killed the Video Star, he even added the name Valentino to Money Shot, ensuring everyone knows who it belongs to. That's right. Another notable piece in his arsenal, arsenal is a gold and half and black half pistol, mm. which, like his other weapons, mean likely sports to his personal touch. Valentino's guns are not just tools; they're essentially his identity and stylish and extravagant as he is. So that's great. That's great. I mean, I am not an advocate for weaponry, but I do love a good weapons design. Do you think his design was good? I mean, they match his character, which is pleasing to me. So it's a good... They're like A-plus in my book. Okay. Alrighty. So, um... What else do we got? What else is there? We've talked about his weapons. Yeah. So what's next? Now, uh... Oh, the name Valentino itself is a is Italian, mm-hmm. meaning brave or strong, which suits his powerful and commanding presence, and can also imply a ladies' man, yeah. quote unquote, uh, aligning perfectly with his role in a pimp in the underworld. What is it? And I I do believe that Valentino uh, actually got his name from uh, Vivzi's, um cat, right. who um, passed away, I believe. Mm-hmm. So she honored him the only way she can. By naming him naming after him the, after as the, as the worst abuser. character in the show. So, yeah. So, additionally, the name likely alludes to Valentine, symbolizing love, which ties to his persona's co- association with seduction and charm. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Yeah. So, let's see. What else we got? Um, interestingly, the origin of Valentino's name has a personal touch from his creator, Vivzy Pop, because she named him after her, her family's, family's pet, pet cat, cat. Um, who was put down in August 15th, yes. 2016, due to old age and suffering. Aww. 
Now, Vivzi explained that she always loved the name and wanted to use it for a character, feeling it was, and I quote, very fancy and had a, and I quote, vaguely Latin sound, which matched the character's extravagant style in the Munich Times to Valentine's Day. Mm hmm. I hope you enjoy your legacy, Valentino the cat. R.I.P. Pour one out. Pour one out. Now you're an abusive moth guy. No, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. So, according to Sam Miller, a background artist and art director at Spindle Horse, mm -hmm. Valentino has, was a Hispanic in life, adding another layer to his character's background and personality. Valentino. Faustis, another contributor to the show's lore, speculates that Valentino may have died in the 1970s, That's which right. could explain his vintage flamboyant style and taste yes. in music and fashion. Mm -hmm. And we don't know too much about Valentino's life on Earth. In fact, we know very little other than the fact that he was likely died in the 1970s. Isn't, like, the fact that we don't know what they did on Earth, like, by design? Yeah, I, I assume so. Like, that, because it's about what their life is on in hell. Like, that's yeah. about their afterlife. I yeah. think Bibsy doesn't want to solidify their life story too yeah. much. I mean, we know some things about uh, some of the other main cast, you know, some of the actual main cast. We know, we know some things about Angel Dust, like how he died and when he died, and certain things about his life, like how he was in the mafia and all that sort of thing. Yeah. We know some things about Husk's life. Or that he was a gambler. That he was a gambler, that he, lived in the, that he died in the 1930s. He died in the 70s, I Did think. Did he die in the 1970s? I think he died in the 70s. Oh. And, um, or is it the 60s? Or One of those. It the 60s. And we do know that no, Nifty... No, Angel was the one that died like 1930, 40, 19, right? Angel died in 1947. 1947, right. Um, and but, Nifty is likely half Japanese. Yeah, and that she died in the 1950s. And she died in the 1950s. So we know some things. And we know um, that Serpentius died in like 1888. 18, whatever. And we do know that like Zestiel was killed and died in like the 16th century. Yes. Like super. He's been there a long time, Zestiel. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so we know some things. So, yeah, but, like, vague Very things, vague. like, the and year I think, they were... I, I think that's a good thing. I think, I think that's a good thing to focus on their, who they are as people in hell, rather as who they were in being alive. Yeah. Um, also, Missy Zilla, she's, like, a scene girl. So I think she died in, like, the 2000s or so. Love Missy Zilla. She appeared in one scene. I know, but she's great. She's so big. Because <laughs> she's a dinosaur. That's right. Everybody do the dinosaur. dinosaur. Is that like her song? Is that her song? Is that her yeah. song? Oh, two? you remember this? Roll back the rock to the dawn of time and sing this song with me. Oh, yeah. That was a good song. Roll back the rock. Roll back the rock. Okay. And then let's join our circus and be join traumatized for life. We have to get to the natural music history of natural museum. And then he was all like, we got to get Boo back into the his, her home. We got to get her back home. Oh, wait, no, that's a different, oh, it's a different film. That's a different, that's the same guy, Inc. but it's the same actor. But... This, yeah, it's the same voice. So anyway, um, l l let's move on. Yes. Um, now, Valentino is quite the character with a range of quirks and, and attributes. According to Faustis, he is full pansexual. Oh, my gosh. Embracing. Whoa! What fool pansexual? Whoa, fool pansexual? Yeah, she's full. He's full. Full? Yeah. Not half. Not half. Not, not a quarter. Not a quarter. Not a third. Not a fool eight. pansexual. Right. Okay. So Vivzi has mentioned that Valentino would likely have a collection of canes, fitting his extravagant and somewhat theatrical personality. Love a cane. Yeah, I like a candy cane. <laughs> Now, Valentino also has the desire to visit the Lust Ring, a detail revealed by Vipsy Pop on her Twitter. That makes sense. Now, Too bad he's stuck in the Pride Ring. Yay! Mm -hmm. Now, in Radio Killed the Video Star, it's known that Valentino owns a customized Robo Fizz named Kitty. So, um, that's actually not confirmed, is it? I don't know, maybe. I, the... People were speculating about whether or not Kitty was a custom Robo Fizz or not, but I don't think that's a confirmed thing. Okay. It might be that Kitty is just her own thing. Right. Now, he's also got a unique habit of making squeaking sounds like a moth while he speaks. Yeah. His accent sometimes shifts between American and Hispanic, mm -hmm. especially during mood swings, adding to his complex and dynamic persona. Not because the actor can't hold the accent and, very long. Make you richer than your papito. <laughs> 
Sorry. Is that his one of his lines? Yeah, that's one of his lines. Yeah. He tells that to I'm Charlie sure when she comes in masquerade, and, uh, and and he like licks her hand, and she and he's like, "I can make you a star. I can make you richer than your papito." I thought he does like a little pause in between. I don't, there might be a pause in there. I'm not trying to make it perfect here. Oh, you gotta do a perfect rendition. This is how you do it. Uh, make you a star better than your papito. That's terrible. I, so that was good. on purposely that was bad. So good. That was on purposely bad. Anyway, uh, so despite his imposing presence, Valentino's eyesight is noticeably poor. Mm. Angel thus once remarked that Valentino spent half an hour co- counting what he thought was a stack of bills, only to find out there were only three. <laughs> now it's actually, it, it, which is an incident reference in the Attic to music video. Mm-hmm. It, it was actually an animation error. It was meant to be counting a, a larger stack. Yeah, but, but animation errors happen. Yeah. But I, it's really funny um, when they, they uh, try to spin it. Turn those into yeah. They do a little spinning. Mm-hmm. Now a fluffy fur collar around Valentino's neck is part of his body. That's right. Now it was confirmed in the episode Masquerade that and was previously implied in some now deleted Voxagram posts. Yes. Now, the collar is sensitive, as shown in Welcome to Heaven, where Valentino screamed in pain when Nifty ripped off some of the fluff. Yeah. Now, Valentino's romantic life is complicated. Oh, super. He, was, he has an on and off, on and off again relationship with Vox, mm-hmm. which is often verbally and physically and psychologically abusive okay. on his end. What? So, first off, so the, the thing about that part is that it's not entirely accurate anymore. Like, yes, there is, like, some of that in there. However, it is not as bad as it was displayed in the non-canon, now-deleted tweets and Instagram posts. Mm. Um, in the show, it is shown that there is a bit more of, like, something else there. It's not, it, it's still, like, abusive and bad, but it's not as bad. Okay. Keep going. I could say because Valentino probably views Vox as like yeah. an equal they're, because they're both overlords. Yes. Um, I'll, well, the thing is, is that the funny thing about Val is that I'm pretty sure the other Vs consider him the stupidest. Okay. Out of all of them, um, which might be true because of the way that Vox talks to him sometimes. Mm-hmm. But uh, there was like some things that happen, I believe, in the deleted Instagram posts where Valentino actually breaks Vox's screen right. um, and then apologizes uh, to him by buying him a bigger screen. Okay. Um, that's like that's like one of those like YouTube pranks where they're like, you know, smashing your iPhone prank. And, and, yeah. the, and it's like they give him a newer, the newer version of the iPhone that would, and that's how, it, that's how it ends. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, but however, that's all non-canon. And there is a lot less physical um, abuse stuff going on. Right. Now, yeah, because I was going to say, they're, as depicted in their Voxagram accounts, might not entirely reflect the show's canon. Yes, okay. Um, but it does highlight their tumultuous uh, dynamic. Yes. Now, in the show Must Go On, they have been dancing provocatively and making out, implying they're dating. That's right. Now, Va- Valentino once owned a pet named Queef. <laughs> Which he ended up killing it because it annoyed him. No. Yeah. Why would you do that to Queef? So you love you know Queef. I don't. Well, I don't know Queef like personally, but that sounds so terrible. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now his cerise pink saliva matches his eyes and tongue, adding to his distinctive color- colorful appearance. That's right. Now Valentino's reaction to Angel Dust moving to the Hasbin Hotel reveals a lot about his character. Mm-hmm. According to Faustis, Valentino initially didn't care about Valentino about Angel Dust's presence in the hotel, but this has been contradicted in Radio Kill the Video Star. Yes. Where Valentino was enraged by the move. The reason is tied to the contract Angel signed, which limits Valentino's control within his porn studio. Yes. Angel's relocation to the hotel gave him some freedom, which Valentino clearly didn't appreciate. Of course. Well, that's the thing with abusers. You know, they want to keep you isolated so that they can keep you in their control and you have no options to escape. Right. Now, Valentino's symbol, designed by Sam Miller, features the elevated moth design with a subtle XXX and a skull-like resemblance to which debuted in the Attic music video. Mm. 
Now, there are also posters of Valentino posing, mostly naked, with his guns. Yeah, nice. Suggesting he might have dabbled in acting himself, mm -hmm. like as any porn direct producer would. Of course. Well, I mean, he had to start somewhere. Okay. You know? <laughs> So finding his right voice, right, the right voice actor for Valentino was challenging for Vivzi. Mm. Now, after numerous auditions and some offers that were declined, why would you ever decline that? Joel Perez was eventually cast. So did a great impressing job. Impressing Vivzi Pop. Joel Perez did a great job. I'll say it. Okay. Valentino's character was introduced relatively late in development mm -hmm. of Hasbin Hotel. Mm -hmm. Now, according to Faustis. Work on Valentino continued even after the release of the pilot episode. Oh, really? It's very interesting. Now, his late addition suggests that Valentino's character design and role were still being refined and developed, reflecting mm -hmm. the creator's commitment and getting his portrayal just right. Nice. Now, his eventual inclusion adds depth to the complexity of the series, particularly his flamboyant style and morally ambiguous actions. That's putting it lightly. Mm. <laughs> now, let's get into the good stuff. All right. Which is the unofficial lore. <gasps> Oh, before we continue, yeah. I would like to say, uh, oh, you know, never mind. Well, I want to hear. I want to hear what you're going to talk about first, because what I'm about to say might be included in this. I'm just going to talk stuff. about his personality. Well, yeah, I know, but there there might be more. Okay. I don't know. So let's talk about the unofficial lore. Yes. His personality and the unofficial lore. Yes. Now he is a narcissistic, hedonistic, and lustful demon who exploits and abuses his workers financially physically and sexually that's right he embodies the trace of a textbook psychopath self-absorbed manipulative and utterly devoid of empathy even towards his lovers and closest quote-unquote friends yeah now his obsession with sex is overt and he rarely utters a sentence without something sexually explicit to him sexual advances and assaults are casual interactions often using them as greetings he proudly claims that and i quote Every kink has a market mm -hmm. and sees no limits in terms of pornography to exploit. I mean, hey, that's the leading porn industry businessman for you. Mm -hmm. Now, Valentino's romantic and sexual partners are treated no better than slaves, and he reacts violently to any disobedience. Mm -hmm. Now, he has random fits of violence and is a complete control fleek. Freak. Fleek? Freak. Yeah, he's on fleek. On fleek. And is a freak. And is a freak. But not the good kind. That freak on fleek. Yeah, but not the good kind. But not the good kind. Yeah. Now, desiring total control of his workers' lives, viewing them solely as sex objects. Now, Valentino frequently forces Angel Dust and others to kiss him and have sex against their will. And we can see that, actually, in the Attic music video. Mm -hmm. Now, Vaggy aptly describes him as a, and I quote, predator. Yep. Preying on vulnerable sinners. Now, like a classic pimp, Valentino lures his, lures his victims with promises of success and security, only right. to reduce them to sexual slaves once they agree to work for him. Yep. Now, he convinced Angel Dust in this way, only to strip away any semblance of dignity he had. Now, I mean, technically, he did make him a star, mm -hmm. so... Now, Valen really bad. At what price? At what price? But at what cost? So, yeah. Valentino is entirely heartless and devoid of any genuinely likable traits. Yet... He is suave, seductive, and possesses a commanding charm. And very, very, very psychopath-coded. Yeah. So he prides himself in manipulating people to his will, but can fall victim to his own temper. Mm. Now, he's greedy and selfish. Valentino siphons most of his employees' earnings, leaving, him, leaving them impoverished and forcing them to degrading sex work. Yep. He cruelly punishes those who fail to pay him, and his hypocrisy is boundless. While he enforces strict diets on his workers and ridicules them for eating without permission, he indulges in fast food and mango smoothies without a second thought. Which, to be fair, mango smoothies are pretty mango good. Mango smoothies are delicious. Are pretty good. I'm seeing, I'm seeing where they pulled from the non-canon into the canon. Yeah. Now, Valentino's immense ego and materialistic tendencies are evident in his expensive, flashy wardrobe and his penchant for compliments about his appearance. Mm. Um... Now, he travels in a pimped-out limo and considers himself superior to everyone else. He reacts violently to criticism, especially if it targets his pride or fashion sense. That makes sense. He's shallow and manipulative. Valentino ignores his workers' non-sexual talents, treating them as merely attractive faces. He holds disdain for anyone he deems unattractive and humiliates them publicly. Wow. His relationship with Bo Box is equally abusive. Often comparing box to, box to a replaceable, broken television. 
His Voxagram posts reveal his misogyny, dismissing women as, and I quote, useless, <laughs> despite m employing many. Now, Valentino takes pride in his sadism, finding pleasure in raping and abusing Ooh, his wow. workers. Big his, R word. Yeah. He has bragged about killing his pet queef simply because it annoyed him, like I mentioned earlier. Now, despite being level-headed compared to the other Vs, he loves being feared and enjoyed, enjoys hurting and murdering people. Now, his ruthlessness extends to killing children if they get in his way. Wow! As shown when he tried to kill fi a, a five-year-old winner who prevented him from killing Angel Dust. Oh, boy. You know? I'm really glad they toned him down for the show. <laughs> him trying to kill a five-year-old winner? I think, I think that that's a... <laughs> The, how did that? How did he get to where the winner was? I want to know. Uh, <laughs> I wonder. So, like the the winner tried to defend Angel Dust. But well, yeah, I mean that makes sense. He's a winner. He's a winner. They're a winner. He's yeah. a winner. Winner. He's eating that chicken dinner. Winner. Winner. Chicken dinner. Right. So, after Angel Dust quit working for him, Valentino's cruelty worsened. Of course. Now he punished a female worker with gang rape Whoa. for being late. Whoa. Stationed guards to shoot any worker trying to leave displayed Husk's severed wings as trophies, Yikes. and he also murdered Fat Nuggets. No! I'm glad this is non-canon. Yeah, he murdered Fat Nuggets How as revenge. dare he to Fat Nuggets? Yeah, to Fat Nuggets. Dead. Killed. Wow! He also, he also ripped off Husk's, Husk's wings. Well, yeah, but, you know, Fat Nuggets. <laughs> Yet... He maintains a dysfunctional friendship with Vox and Velvet, engaging in soirees and yacht parties. He occasionally acts friendly towards Velvet, but often treats both her and Vox as part of his entourage, expecting their worship. Which is really funny, considering how in the show, Vox is pretty much the leader of the Vs. Right. So, I think Valentino thinks he's the leader of the Vs, even though he's obviously not. Yeah. So, what were you going to say? What was I going to say about this? Oh, it's uh, really funny because, you know, Valentino is very, it's very much a lustful demon, right? right. As you mentioned. It, it, it's mentioned somewhere on the wiki yeah. that Asmodeus despises Valentino. Right. And Asmodeus is, you know, the avatar of lust. Right. And he, like, but he's really big on like consent who Asmodeus, Asmodeus? Yeah, okay. Asmodeus is like it's only good if it's consensual he's okay. mentioned that like in the show I believe makes sense um but obviously as you mentioned in this non-canon stuff Valentino is very hmm, fine with assault right and does it regularly and so Asmodeus hates him right I can so only I think that's really funny that the actual embodiment of lust does not like this guy. Right, I bet. So, like, what do you think about canon Valentino and uncanon Valentino? I think that mm, they are both really bad. One is obviously a bit more intense than the other, but canon Valentino does have a lot of the attributes of non calen Valentino, although perhaps a little more muted. <laughs> For, like, the streaming services? For the streaming services, obviously. So, let's talk about his, his powers a bit. Okay, now, we'll talk a bit more about the non canon powers. Now, he can shift into a more powerful and terrifying demonic form at will, which makes sense. Like, that makes sense. Well, a lot of Sinner Demons have that. Most of them do, yes. Now, um, he can do it at will or whenever his anger reaches a boiling point. Now, this transformation amplifies only formidable abilities, making him even even more formidable opponent. Mm -hmm. And he can re revert back to his default form effortlessly once he calms down or yes. chooses to. Um, blah, blah, blah. <gasps> blah, blah, blah. Yeah, was, okay. Now, Valentino has regeneration abilities. Now, he can heal from life-threatening injuries almost instantly, including his, the regrowth of lost limbs. Well, most sinner demons have that because, you know... They can't die. Right. Now, um, if I his believe. physical yeah, if his physical form is completely destroyed, he can respawn, returning to his original state. 
Now, in a chapter called The Fading Light, Valentino's regeneration was put to the test when Angel Dust shot off an entire right side of his head. Whoa. Pretty cool. Despite the severe injury, Valentino's facial structure, skull, and brain matter regenerated within minutes. Nice. Through the attack rendered him unconscious Pretty during cool. the process. Mm, yeah. Now, he quickly healed from a three chest wounds inflicted by Angel Dust's Tommy gun. Well, also. That's, what you, that's why you gotta use the angelic weapons, you know? That's right. what'll get him down. Um, so Valentino is also significantly more powerful than both sinners or hellborn demons. Makes sense. Mm. Well, as an overlord, yeah. uh, he would be. Now he's able to overpower lower demons effortlessly. Now during V's assault on Butcher Town, you know V's assault on Butcher Town. I do not know. You mean the V's assault? Yeah, the V's assault on, on Butcher, Butcher Town. Town? Yeah. I don't know that. You know what Butcher Town is, right? I know what Butcher Town is. That's where the cannibals live, right? That's Cannibal Town. Oh well, I don't know where Butcher Town is. That's where the butchers live. Oh. <laughs> like they, like, like they, the like... people who cut people up, the serial killer town. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. And then maybe they just like they do actual like butchering, like maybe they, they just they cook they they cook meat. meat and stuff and normal meat, you know. So, anyway, he showcased this power by severely injuring and erasing several sinners using his smoke manipulation and angelic bullets from his revolver. Nice. He. I mean, well, not nice, but yeah. He has also overpowered skilled sinners like Angel Dust, Vaggy, and Cherry Bomb, often restraining them with his red smoke. Even Angel Dust has been defeated by Valentino with little effort, which makes sense. That makes that makes sense. I mean, obviously, you know. Now, Valentino's large moth-like wings grant him the ability to levitate and fly. Whoa. Well, as wings do. Yeah. Um, now, despite his lean frame, Valentino ex possesses impressive strength. He can lift Angel Dust by the neck with one hand. You mentioned that. Right. Um, he can also dismember other sinners with his bare hands. You mentioned that. Um, Valentino's signature ability was <laughs> is his control over red magical tangible smoke. Which we've mentioned. Yeah. Um, we can... We... It, it seems like a lot of these non-canon powers have been transferred, transferred to, to canon. Yeah, so he can conjure various objects and weapons from his smoke, including hearts, hands, whips, swords, and miniature versions of himself. And well, even a throne, we've, but... we've seen hearts, we've seen chains, uh, we haven't seen any of this other stuff. Right. But it'd be really interesting if that is, you know, carried on into canon. Right. Now, Valentino can also use his smoke to teleport himself and others bewitch people and create solidified appendages to restrain or assault multiple people at, at a distance. Wild! Crazy! Now, his smoke can also be used offensively as seen in, when he threw cars into a group of sinners and constructed everyone's favorite character, Fergus, with smoke tendrils. Whoa! Fergus is back, guys! Yeah. Yeah, everyone, like, classic has classic been hotel character. Classic has been hotel character, Fergus. Fergus. We all know Fergus. We talked about him so much in the last episode. Yeah, he's always in the he's, he's in all he's in he's all in episodes. All of the episodes. All the episodes in every we single frame. Love Fergus. Right. So, oops. Oops. Dang it, I lost my spot. Oh, dang! Technical difficulties, you guys. He lost his spot. Um, we're gonna wait for him to find it again. Until then, I'd just like to say that I think Valentino sucks. I think okay. he's a really bad he person. Can't say I can't say it. You said. <laughs> You said worse words already. You mean like rape? Yes. The yes. hard R? The hard R. With the hard R. Honestly, I mean, it's only bad because YouTube is going to get mad at us for saying it. Yeah, good thing this isn't going to be on YouTube. Yeah, good thing. It's not going to be on YouTube. Yeah. Where is it going to go? It's going right? on the podcast and like, on do like we not Spotify. Put this, do we not put this podcast on YouTube? I mean, I guess. I guess we'll, we'll have to just be demonetized, I guess. I don't think we were monetized in the first place. So, yeah, I guess we have nothing to lose. Then. I guess we've got nothing to lose. So let Let's me... not be afraid of words, you guys. So, yeah. Okay, I'm almost there. He's almost there. Um, so, to, to the people out there making Angel Dust and Valentino shipping art, what's going on, you guys? Yeah, I wouldn't what are you guys with doing? this guy. I, I mean, like, I understand that there are some people who have some interesting fantasies about power dynamics, but, I mean, guys, come on. You know, like... This is this is just. Why would you want to see him in that kind of relationship? This just. I'd, I'd much rather you ship him with Alistair, which I mean, obviously, I don't think you should do that either, because Alistair is canonically ace, um, and that's kind of like you know going against that. He's aromantic and asexual. I know a lot of so. people get really defensive about that because we're like, oh, asexual people can have sex too, like that kind of thing. I mean. 
That's what they. That's what a lot Asexual I hear. Asexual people can enjoy like. Like, you know, I'm not asexual, so I can't, I, I can't, I, don't know I can't say anything. I have a friend who is asexual, and she has engaged in, like, not, not like sex, but like. Which, is she not, is she not aromantic, though? Is she she's romantic? not aromantic. Which makes sense, okay. Yeah. Um, I did hear that asexuality is like a spectrum. Well, I guess there's a lot of things that are a spectrum. Yeah. You know, I am not the leading figure on these things. I barely know anything. Okay. But, like, if you're asexual and you're like, I can have sex too, sure, that's great. Yeah. That's gr- That's really good for you. And I'm not being sarcastic, although it might sound like it. I have this really weird thing with my voice where when I'm being serious, I sound sarcastic. Yeah. I promise you, I'm not being sarcastic. Yes. Yeah. We stand our asexual a- band. Alistair is very clearly the kind of asexual that does not want to engage in sex. Yeah. Didn't, like, I know Angel does try to, like, throw it out there. Yeah, and then several like, times. And, and like, both times he's like, no. He's like, eh, not going to happen. Very clearly he's like, no. Ha! No. Yeah. So, yeah, I found my notes. Great. So, um, Back on track. Now, Valentina will smoke and temporarily intoxicate and control others if it's ah. right excessively. Eh? See? Drugs. Okay. Now, once freed from his hypnosis, victims can cough up the smoke before losing consciousness. Mm. Now, by tossing his cigarette, Valentino can create toxic cloud of smoke that can fill a room. Mm. Now, these clouds are extremely difficult to escape as tangible arms in, in, emerge in the smoke, <laughs> from the smoke to subdue victims, hastening their demise. Wow. Now, Valentino can blend into his smoke and enhance his speed, reflexes, and ability ag- or agility, making him even more dangerous in combat. Dang. Now, he can also teleport himself and others via his smoke. You she mentioned. Yeah. Valentino's desire for control extends to the spiritual realm, forcing his workers to sign soul contracts to make them his property. Of course. Do- well, and that's part of being an overlord. You know, the more souls you have under your contract, the stronger you are. Right. Now, through these contracts, he can torture his workers spiritually, cause unbearable pain, or even erase their existence from afar. Wow. Now, while these contracts are powerful, they're not entirely unbreakable. Yes. They can be nullified through deal-making, as Alistair did to free Angel Dust. Ah. Or if, I wonder if they'll carry that into the canon. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Cause, we'll see. We'll find out. Because um, what happens is deals more about w- with Vox. Yes. And we can talk about it when we talk about Vox. Yes. Now, or if he could also get rid of him if Valentino chooses to release an employee, which he's never done. He's never done. No. And, and I seriously doubt that he'll do that to Angel Dust since... He is his favorite toy, quote yeah, unquote. Unless he gets like a, an instant character development change. And then, it's an instant character development change. Where he's like, like, I hate you, Angel. I hate you, Angel. Oh, actually, you're free now. Wait a second. I've seen the light. You know what? There's, there's something. There, I think I think they're onto something about this redemption but, thing. You're, off you go. Off you go. And now I shall ascend to I, heaven. Now, <laughs> my arms wide. I raise into the sky. So now, um, Valentino is also amused to chemical agents and the intoxicating effects of his own smoke. Ah! Eh, drugs. Right. So he allows him to use his powers without any risk to himself. Ah, I see. Makes sense. No. Valentino wields a significant power and influence in hell, particularly within Pentagram City. Yes, which is where they live. Right. Now, his authority extends across various spheres, including his workers, gang members, and even the city's police department. Also, there's a police department. <laughs> there's a police department in hell, you guys. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Now, his authority stems from his position as an overlord, one of the highest-ranking entities in hell's hierarchy, That's right. giving him control over lower demons and significant sway in the pride wing. Mm-hmm. Valentino was initially seen as the leader of the V's, even with Vox allowing him to take charge at times. Ah, which is no longer the case, right. as we can see um, in several things shown in the, in canon, the canon show, where uh, Vox very clearly belittles Valentino mm-hmm. uh, through certain things, like you know that that the the scene where Val is going crazy over Angel Dust and is like attempting to go and murder all of the people in the Hazen Hotel, where Val is like, hey. I wonder why that's not a good idea. Mm-hmm. And is like talking him through into thinking of the reason why he shouldn't do that. Yeah. 
And as well as Velvet also not respecting him much. Yeah. Like, uh, what was it saying? What, what was this long? Like, uh, you're irrelevant. We can't leave without your intelligence. Ugh. That's how the song goes. What? Exactly. What song is that? That was Respectless. Oh. <laughs> I don't need a new attitude. I am the backbone of the V's. Yeah. So Valentino wasn't. Yeah, I already said that. So uh, no, they, it's it's we can't we can't we can't something without more intelligence. Oh, okay, I thought you said your intelligence. No, 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 no. It's it's um something something relevance. We like can't act irrelevant. without more intelligence. Okay. So yeah, so we also have many criminal organizations and the corrupt the police That's right. department under the thumb. porn industry, prostitution. I assume drugs are in there. Um, the adult film industry. Uh, that's, that's the porn industry. That's the, what I said. The triple X industry. That's the same thing, Nathaniel. Come on. The adult entertainment that's industry. That's still the same thing. Stop it. Clubs. He's got clubs. Okay. <laughs> so now they comply with his orders, fearing retaliation, and because Valentino supplies them with weapons and drugs. Okay. Despite losing his leadership role within the V's, Valentino remains slightly influential figure. Mm. Now, in the uncanon version, he's actually fluent in English and Italian instead oh, of Spanish. No. Yeah, like they changed him to Spanish now. Right. Now, Valentino's charisma is one of his most potent tools. He has a flamboyant, leva- le- le- uh, lascivia- lascivious, uh, uh, charm. lascivious, lascivious charm. Yeah, that allows him to sway others to his will. Now, his charm was, has persuaded hundreds, if not thousands, to follow him, including Vox. Mm. Now, and now he, as a moth demon, Valentino has extremely sensitive hearing. His antenna can detect potential clients or enemies from miles away, giving him an, an edge in both business and combat. Now, Valentino has also dis- dis- demonstrated exceptional skill with firearms. and uh, He has made precise shots, such as yes. when he shot Bruce from the backseat of his limousine. You know Bruce, Bruce. right? Bruce! How can I did forget we, about Bruce? Did we talk about Bruce? No, this is the first time we're talking about Who's, Bruce. Who is Bruce? <laughs> I don't know. Who are these people? Now, he also accurately aimed at Charlie through smoke during a confrontation. <gasps> no, Charlie. Now, Valentino is highly intelligent in the uncanon version. Yes. Capable of organizing and orchestrating numerous criminal activities and businesses. I think it's a really good job that they made him a little bit dumber in yeah. the show. <laughs> I think that was a good decision. Yeah. And like, I think, like, really hot-headed and very, like, very impulsive. Yes. Which, I mean, clearly he still has some, like, business acumen, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that, like, I think, it's a, I think it's a good thing that they've made Vox the real, like, leader, sort of, mm-hmm. like, more intelligent one. And then Val is kind of just, like, chilling on the side. Right. I think that's fine. Now, uh, yeah, uh... Yeah, so he has a deep understanding of Hell's history, weapons, and technology. Crazy. Now, his intelligence also extends to manipulating others, including Vox and Velvet, convincing them, them and wow. his workers that they're nothing without him. Wow. He was really a lot more important in this non-canon. Yeah. He was also a lot more, like, very, he did a lot of bad he did stuff. A, also, like, I mean, like, still, he's done a lot of bad things in the canon as well, but in the non-canon, like, jeez, he is horrendous. No wonder yeah. people hate him. Yeah, so Valentino's presence is highly intimidating. He can also, he can even make the most defiant individuals like Angel Dust docile through his sheer force of personality, reputation, and violent outbursts. Yeah. Now, Valentino is a master manipulator. Using his intelligence and charm to control and exploit his workers and associates, he preys on the vulnerable, yeah. promising them protection, fame, and other rewards, yeah. only to trap them in cycles of dependency and abuse. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know part of the abusive cycle. Yeah. I think that he's still manipulative in the show. Um, I think it's just in a different way. Mm-hmm. Now, he skillfully, uses guilt, he skillfully uses guilt trips and subtle jabs to maintain control, resulting to more severe punishment if his grips on them weakens. Yep. So, Valentino's physical attributes, including his sharp teeth and claws, serve as natural weapons. He has used these claws in combat, especially even injuring Vox, <gasps> as indicated by claw marks on Vox's body during a humiliating event. <gasps> now, Valentino's eyes glow bright red in the dark, allowing him to see in low-light conditions and adding to his intimidating appearance. 
This is it's crazy how this non canon Valentino is making me feel bad for Vox. <laughs> okay. So just wait until we talk about like Vox in another episode. You oh, probably won't feel as I, bad. I probably won't feel as bad, yeah, you're right. Now Valentino is has extensive connections throughout Pentagram City. Of course. Including alliances with criminal organizations and the corrupt police force. Mm. He also possesses a vast collection of powerful firearms, including those with angelic bullets. His alliance with Vox and Velvet consolidates their power, enabling them to leverage their respective armies and resources. That's right. Now, as the owner of Hell's Porn Industry, a fashion company, and a key player in drug and weapon deals, Valentino is extremely wealthy. His wealth affords him luxury cars... Clothes, drugs, and even angelic weapons. That's right. Ensuring that he lives a life of excess and power. Mm-hmm. Now, Valentino carries a collection of flashy canes that, while yes. seemingly just ostentatious accessories, serve a more similar purpose. Mm. He uses these canes to, quote-unquote, correct his disobedient employees, yes. often employing them as tools for physical punishment. Yep. Additionally, some of his canes double as swords, making them both a stylish and lethal part of his arsenal. Ooh, I love a cane sword. Right? So, Valentino also has a co- custom collection of handguns, which he uses to intimidate and control his workers and subordinates. You know he's got those handguns in the cannon. Let's go. Because we talked about it earlier. Right. As well as is to eliminate those who displease or opposes him. Now, he often indulges in shooting at sinners from his balcony for sport. Oh! <laughs> now, his primary weapon is his park hot pink revolver money shot, which we see in the official yes. show. Now, his revolver features a custom black grip adorned with three pink hearts, a zebra print frame, and a gold hammer. Yes. Valentino's firearms are extremely powerful, and they can cause significant damage, and demonstrated when he destroyed a large flat-screen TV with just three shots. Now, he also used his firearms to deadly effect, such as when he shot one of his underlings in the head, causing the goon's entire head to explode, and when he shot Angel Dust's lower arm off with a single bullet. No, Angel. Now, all of Valentino's firearms are loaded with holy bullets, making them particularly dangerous to demons and sinners in hell. Yeah. Now, these bullets can cause permanent injuries or even kill other demons and lower angels. Well, yeah. Giving Valentino. Yeah giving Valentino a significant edge in confrontations. So, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about his relationship with Vox. Okay. Now, they have a long-standing and complex relationship marked by a mix of professional collaboration, romantic entanglement, and mutual manipulation. Now... Let's go mutual manipulation. Okay. Now, they even... They have been close partners and on-and-off lovers ever since Valentino's arrival in hell. Wow. Sharing a relationship that's highly toxic, dysfunctional, and codependent. This is toxic yaoi, you guys. Okay. <laughs> You've heard of toxic yuri? We're talking about toxic yaoi. Okay. <laughs> now, and so it also has, like, it, it's despite the constant banter, sarcastic remarks, and emotional abuse, they maintain a level of genuine respect and cooperation. Mm. Thriving in their shared predatory nature and love of chaos. Now, their interactions often revolve lighthearted teasing and genuine spite, both with like, exchanging sexual innuendos and suggestive comments. They even bring out the worst in each other, of course. Em- enjoying the power struggles and mind games that come with their relationship. Valentino, in particular, enjoys Vox's possessiveness, even when it leads to Vox torturing Valentino's workers out of jealousy. Wow. Now, the two are heavily implied to continue having a sexual relationship despite allegedly breaking up before the series events. Ah. Vox is often seen assisting Valentino with his schemes and op- and going so far as to brainwash some of Valentino's workers for them, for him to make them more compliant. Now, Valentino, in turn, seems to appreciate and even enjoy this level of control and manipulation. However, their relationship is without, not without conflict, of obviously. Course. They often disagree on plans and strategies, leading to emotional and sometimes physical confrontations. Valentino frequently downplays Vox, referring to him dismissively as an, and I quote, broken TV. Yes, which was, which was mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Yes. And treating him as little more than a, an accessory. He is known to put out cigarettes in Vox's skin, indicating a level of physical abuse. Vox, however, is not passive in this dynamic. Of course he not. He taunts and teases Valentino, often escalating the situation. He uses his electrokinesis to paralyze Valentino during one of their altercations. 
demonstrating his dominance and reminding Valentino of his place. All right, yeah, I don't feel bad for him anymore. Okay, so his power struggle highlights the deeply dysfunctional nature of the relationship and both but both parties engaging in abusive and manipulative behavior. Wow. Why don't you feel bad for Vox anymore? Well, because he's... <laughs> I mean, like, I suspected that this was the case as well. Um, but he's very clearly also manipulative back. Mm-hmm. So, you know, hey, match made in hell. I guess. Now, despite these tensions, Valentino continues to maintain a working relationship with Vox. Yeah. Now, recognizing the benefits of their partnership, now he is acutely aware that Vox's power and influence are significant and challenging Vox could have serious consequences. This dynamic is evident when their shared activities such as betting on fights in Club Kaiju with Velvet, where Valentino shows restraint, likely to avoid further conflict with Vox. You know Club Kaiju, right? That's what Missy, Missy's, Missilla, Missy, Missy Zilla, she, she owns that. Right. Now, Vox is control... Where the big, big demons go. Okay. So, Vox is control over Valentino... Well, because it says Kaiju. Yeah. Now, Vox is control over Valentino, and the situation is further solidified when he strips Valentino of his authority over Pentagram City. <gasps> a move that signals a significant shift in their power dynamics. Despite this betrayal, Valentino appears to accept a new arrangement, possibly out of fear or recognition of Vox's authority. Ooh. So yeah. Getting put in his place. Now, Ooh. let's talk about his relationship with Velvet. Okay. Now, Velvet holds a unique place in Valentino's life, serving as his social media manager, lover. And from her perspective... I'm sorry, what? Um, the social media manager. Uh, uh, and what came after that? Um... Perspective and adopted daughter. You said that there was. You said. You said lover in there. Right. Wh huh? What do you mean, huh? What? What do you mean, what? Surely not. Surely, yes, they're banging. No, but yeah. then you just said perspective daughter. No, yeah, from her perspective, an adopted daughter. From her perspective, an adoptive daughter, but they're banging? Gross. You no, know, there's a reason why he's in hell, Clara. Disgusting. I guess there's a reason why they're both in hell. <laughs> so, Valentino's relationship with Velvet is distinctively different from his relationship with Vox. I but... sincerely hope they do not carry that into the canon. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm all for Val and Vox being on again, off again. Do not add Velvet in there. <laughs> Because Leave her out of it! They did confirm that he is pansexual, so he does... I know! He is into women. I know! But leave her out of it! Okay. I understand that he's also into women and probably also, you know, the non-binary people. And the gender fluid. And the gender fluid people. And he's into all of it. Mm -hmm. But don't bring Velvet into this. Okay. So, yeah, he exhibits, um, yeah, so he exhibits a somewhat fatherly demeanor towards Velvet. But they're banging? But they're banging. Treating her with a level of patience and tolerance he rarely shows to others. This is evident in the way he allows her to host parties and live streams in his studio. I'm really glad this is non-canon. <laughs> okay. Now, every extermination... Yeah, he does... He lets her host parties and live streams in his studio every extermination day. Mm -hmm. And his willingness to forgive her minor mistakes. A leniency he does not extend to other associates. You've got it twisted. Okay. <laughs> I'm not the one who needs a new attitude. attitude. So... Valentino shows in a surprising amount of yeah. care towards Velvet, buying her a new phone and even patting her on the head for helping him with violent acts. Wow, that's great. But they're banging? Yep. Like the massacre in Butchertown. You know the massacre in Butchertown? You talked about the massacre in Butchertown, but I don't know it specifically. So he also seems to enjoy Velvet's brutal tendencies, encouraging her by texting her tips on how to prolong a victim's suffering. Wow, that's really nice of him. Now, the duo often jokes around, forming a chaotic and comedic partnership when together, and Valentino is surprisingly tolerant of Velvet's hyperactive nature. However, his apparent fatherly affection has its limits. Mm -hmm. Valentino is not above lashing out at Velvet when he's angry or humiliated. For instance, after being embarrassed by Stolas on Voxtagram, Valentino took out his frustration on both Velvet and Vox, calling them stupid Fs and declaring them dead to him. That's what happens when you mess with the Stolas. That's Clark. what happens when you mess with Stolas. 
So what do you think? What? Do you think it's kind of fun that Stolas is in this in this mix? Yeah. I mean, like, I read somewhere on the wiki that Stolas also really hated Valentino, which mm-hmm. I'm like, hell yeah. No, you can't I'm say hell yeah. I'm all for it. I can say words! So, anyway, um, he even spitefully insulted Velvet's cookies, causing her to cry, which is not cool. Aw, Velvet. That's not cool. That's not him. cool. I'll, I'll have your cookies, Velvet. I'll eat your cookies. I'm sure they're delicious. Even though you're a terrible person, likely, because you're in hell. Mm-hmm. Why are you in hell? Because I didn't recycle. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Velvet would be in hell because she cyber-bullied a bunch of people. Yeah. What I, in my, in the fan fiction in that your I'm fan, working, In your fanon? That I'm working on. Oh, this is a little stink peek. She was like a YouTuber, uh-huh. like a massive YouTuber who like treated everyone like was a massive two faced person yeah. who was different online and offline and mm. treated her employees terribly and then they did an exposed video on her <gasps> and she got cancelled. Oh my gosh. And she got cancelled and then she couldn't deal with it and then she and and she unalived herself. Oh, she committed sewer slide. Yeah, and that's in my fan in my That's in your fan. That's my fan. That's your fan in version. In my fan fiction in my head canon. Your fan fiction in your fan in Yeah, so it's not so it's not Well this is it's not real. I I think that's real I think that makes sense for her. Mm Mm-hmm. So, additionally, <laughs> Valentino physically assaulted Velvet, punching her in the back of the head. Wow. After he joked, she joked about his favorite Coke being destroyed by Cherry Bomb. He showed no remorse for making her cry, angrily telling her to shut up. So, yeah. yeah. So, the creators of the series, like, like Vel- v- Vibzy, basically, Vibzy. describe Valentino's view of Velvet as akin to seeing her as a pet. She's a... She's like a pet to me. But they're banging. She's like banging. Do you do you get that reference, Clara? No, what is it? It was from Invincible. I, when I Omni Man seen was Invincible. like talking about his wife and he's like, She's like a she's more like a pet to me. Well, because he lives forever or something. Right. That's exactly uh, why. So uh Crazy. Wild. So Um he rewards her for her obedience and doing as she says reinforcing a dynamic that, while more tranquil than his interactions with Vox, still has a deeply exploitative and controlling nature. His relationship highlights the complexity of Valentino's character, capable of moments of apparent kindness, yet rooted in manipulation and dominance or whatever. Let's talk about his relationship with Lucifer. Oh, okay. Now, he has a com- it's complex and multifaceted. Initially, Valentino seemed to have what somewhat friendly rapport with Lucifer. Gaining enough trust to have the V's act as Lucifer's assassins. Oh. So the so Lucifer would occasionally ask them with eliminating unruly loverlords who posed a threat to his reign. Ah. So in these interactions, Valentino displayed a facade of respect, often addressing Lucifer as Your Highness, mm-hmm. and even offering the services of his top workers for Lucifer's entertainment. Ah. It's implied that Lucifer frequented Valentino's studio for amusement. That's not cool, Lucifer. That's not cool, Lucifer. I thought you were cool. I thought you I thought were cool, you were cool man. I thought you were cool. What happened? Where did you play with your ducks? What about your ducks? What about your social awkwardness? Yeah. So despite this outward display of respect, Valentino harbors a deep-seated resentment towards Lucifer. He secretly dislikes him, believing that Lucifer views him merely as a common thug. Now... Valentino has been known to mock Lucifer behind his back, as seen when he, Vox, and Velvet sang a mocking song about Lucifer's fall from heaven. Wow. I wish I, wish I could hear that song. That would be really interesting to hear, yeah. However, this mocking attitude quickly dissipates whenever Lucifer is present. Of course. Showing Valentino's underlying fear of him. Now, Valentino's fear of Lucifer is actually well-founded. He is visibly terrified when Lucifer reprimands him, particularly when fi- failing to demolish the has-been hotel as ordered. <gasps> Le gasp. Yeah. Despite his resentment, Valentino clearly understands the power and authority Lucifer has over him. This fear is further highlighted when Valentino expresses his delight at the thought of Lucifer possibly being dead, showing a mix of fear and opportunism. Ah. Now, Valentino, Vox, and Velvet managed to get back into Lucifer's good graces after capturing half of the has Hotel crew. Despite this, Lucifer treats them harshly and makes it clear that their lives are spared only because Satan enlisted their help. Who? Different guy. Different guy. Now, 
This in underscores the precarious nature of Valentino's position in Hell's hierarchy, where even powerful overlords like him are subjected to the whims and authority of higher powers like Lucifer. Now let's talk about Dia and Summer. Who? They are two lesbian sinners who hold significant roles in Valentino's operation as his top models and henchmen. Ah. Now they are often seen accompanying Valentino during his visits to nightclubs. They either cling to him or is or entertain other club goers. Uh, were they? Were did they get? Um, were they the two in the addict music video? No, think? I think I think they were. Oh, what do you know? Now, despite Valentino's apparent attraction to them, he primarily sees Dia and Summer as pretty faces, accessories, or sex objects. Yeah, that's that tracks. Now he often has them perform intimate acts with each other for his pleasure, further emphasizing great. his objectification of them. Yeah, really, really great, man. Now, the two women seem drawn to Valentino, not only for his power and charisma, but also for his opportunities he provides within his organization. Yep. Now, they are loyal followers who generally obey his command without question, particularly as Summer appears to be fascinated by Valentino's frequent raging outbursts and serves as his personal spy further in, 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 uh, in, uh, ingratiating him, herself to him by proving valuable information. Now, their relationship with Valentino is emblematic of his control attitude towards those under his control. He uses and exploits them for his benefit, showing little genuine care or regard for their well-being and beyond how they can serve his interests. Mm -hmm. Queef. Queef! A creature resembling Hell's version of domesticated dogs. Queef! Now, he was briefly owned by Valentino as a pet. However, Valentino's tolerance of Queef was short-lived. Only a few hours after acquiring the pet, Valentino shot and killed it, stating that he found it annoying. Oh my gosh. Following this, he disposed of Queef's remains by feeding him to Vox's pet shark. By the way, he has a pet shark. Vox has a pet shark. Right. Oh, we got to see that in the show. Right. Now, this incident underscores Valentino's cruel and callous nature. I can't believe the R.I.P. Queef. Yeah. So, um, now we're going to get into the, the big one. All right. Angel Dust. Angel Dust. Now, it is a long, deeply troubled and abusive relationship marked by manipulation, exploitation, and severe emotional trauma. Mm. Now, Valentino first encountered Angel Dust when the struggling spider demon was caught stealing from him. Rather than kill him, Valentino recognized Angel's potential as a uh, profitable asset due to his looks and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, he offered Angel a job as a porn actor and dancer in his studio, along with access to drugs and protection from the dangers of Pentagram City. Angel, who had been living in the streets and struggling to survive, accepted the offer, leading him to becoming one of Valentino's most lucrative workers. So that's the origin story. I suspected. Do you think that we'll see that in the official I don't show? know. It'd be really interesting if we did. Now, despite Angel's significant contributions and hard work, Valentino's constantly demanded him, showing no genuine affection beyond superficial, lustful attraction. Mm -hmm. Now, Valentino viewed Angel solely as a sex object and source of income, yep. regularly forcing him into sexual acts whether consensual or, or not. not. Disgusting. But we should totally make fan fan No <laughs> fan art of we that. We should not. Him. We should not. Now, the only gestures resembling kindness from Valentino were mater material, such as buying angel clothes, makeup, and giving him fat nuggets as a pet. Yep. Primarily to keep Angel under his control. That's what they do, you know? Classic love bombing. Right. Now over the years, Valentino subjected Angel to physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. He punished Angel for minor infractions such as being late for shoots or not earning enough money by beating him or forcing him into degrading situations. Yep. Despite earning millions for Valentino, Angel was kept impoverished, barely able to afford a low-rent apartment, yep. and forced to, into additional sex work to make ends meet. Now, the constant abuse left Angel terrified and submissive around Valentino, a stark contrast to his usual confident and smug demeanor with others. Mm -hmm. 
Valentino's possessiveness and control over Angel extended beyond the professional realm. He tested Angel's loyalty by kidnapping Angel's best friend, Cherry Bomb, and attempted to force Angel to kill her. Wow. Now, when Angel refused and yes. turned the gun on Valentino... Good job, Angel. He was... He retaliated by having Angel beaten and threatened to kill Fat Nuggets if Angel disobeyed him again. That makes sense. That makes sense now, for what that for him, yeah. To be fair, I think this was a lot better for character growth than what we got in the actual show. You think? Do you not agree? <laughs> I think so cuz this actually forces Angel into like a choice and to what is more important, my best friend or or me being submissive to this guy. Because yeah. it actually forces Angel to make that choice and definitely makes that transition It's definitely into, more intense. I, I think it, it makes it a little bit more more earned than him just flipping on a dime. I don't see it as flipping on a dime, but... What do you feel, feel, feel it is? What do I feel it is? I mean, we don't get to see, like, every single second of everything that happens in the show. Uh There are moments we don't see, so there could have been off-screen growth. Yeah, I guess. I mean... I mean, I guess. uh. You don't have to sound so condescending to me, okay? (laughs) Sorry. Now, despite the abuse, initially, Angel initially diluted himself into believing that Valentino cared for him. Yeah. Now, however, after a particularly traumatic event... With support from friends like Charlie, Vaggie, and Fergus, our favorite character. I love Fergus. Let's go, Fergus. Angel finally stood up to Valentino. That's right. Publicly renounced him, removed his gold tooth, (gasps) a symbol of Valentino's control, and confronted him at the Hasbin Hotel. Let's go. During this confrontation, Valentino murdered Fat Nuggets. No! In front of Angel, using the act to emotionally devastate him. Fat Nuggets! No. Valentino attempted to manipulate Angel into returning to work for him, but Angel, now determined to break free, refused. That's right. Now, I think this is actually a lot better than what we got. You think that it's a lot better than what we got? Well, yeah. that's subjective. Okay. You don't think so? Eh, I mean, it, would it have been better if they had kept Valentino's character like this? Maybe. I don't think but they like, changed his character. I don't think like if if they kept Valentino's character like this, but I think it would have been better for Angel's growth. If I it, would like, like to, to not make... see Fat Nuggets die. Thank yeah, we, you very much. We can like take that out. That doesn't mean anything. But even though that That's would be very That's clearly a very important part of this. Well, I think is Fat Nuggets death makes Angel more determined, which backfires on Valentino. Right. But I don't want to see Fat Nuggets die. Okay. So therefore, I prefer what we got to this. Okay. So their relationship had become openly hostile. Yeah, clearly. Now, they encountered each other in Purgatory. Purgatory! So Angel spat in Valentino's face, cursing him for killing Fat Nuggets. Valentino, unfazed, dismissed Angel's anger and continued to try to manipulate him, even offering his job back. Angel, however, remained absolute on rejecting Valentino's control. Good job, Angel. Now, during a subsequent confrontation in Baxter's laboratory, (gasps) Valentino shot Angel, severing one of his arms. Despite Angel's defiance and willingness to die rather than return to his former life, Valentino remained relentless, attempting to use Angel's soul contract to inflict pain and control over him. However... Alistair intervened. Let's go. Ultimately freeing Angel from Valentino's contract by tricking the V's into betting it and winning. Haha, <laughs> nice. This left Valentino furious but powerless as he lost control over Angel Dust. Good stuff. Now his relationship with Cherry Bomb, on the other hand, mm. is a deeply antagonistic relationship. Makes sense. Built by intense hatred on both sides. Of course. Cherry's loathing for Valentino stems from his abusive treatment of her best friend, Angel Dust. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Cough it out. Cough it out. No. She channels this hatred into a vendetta against the Moth Demon, making it a hobby out of sabotaging his business and public image. That's right. We see that in the Attic music video where she right. goes around bombing, you know, things that have his face on it. Yeah. Now, Cherry frequently blows up billboards and other advertisements featuring Valentino's right. face in businesses. That's right. As well as deliberately disrupting his arms deals and operations and his associates. Nice. 
These acts of defiance inf infuriate Valentino, making Cherry a persistent thorn in his side. At one point, Cherry's actions led to her capture by Valentino's underlings mm -hmm. while she was attempting to sabotage his business. Now, seizing the opportunity for revenge, Valentino to decided to use Cherry's test to test Angel Dust's loyalty. Right. Knowing of their friendship, Valentino ordered Angel to kill Cherry, aiming yep. to break Angel's spirit and reinforce his control. Although, that didn't happen because Backfired. Angel refused to comply and instead turned the gu his gun on Valentino, That's and right. who easily disarmed him. That's right. In retaliation... Valentino had his men torture Cherry, Oof. but he ultimately let her go. This release was a, not an act of mercy, but rather a calculated move to continue tormenting her by keeping Angel under his abusive control, knowing it would hurt Cherry to see her friends suffer. Mm. Mm. Now, undeterred by Valentino's intimidation tactics, Cherry continued her campaign against him, determined not to let him mistreat Angel, unchallenged. Now, he... she regularly provoked Valentino, who responded by sending his subordinates and the Pentagram City Police Department, our favorite police department. Of course, love the Pentagram City Police Department. Yeah. To attack her and the resistance fighters. Despite these efforts, Cherry consistently managed to evade capture or fight off the attack, sustaining only minor injuries. Valentino later captured Cherry again, this time using her as bait to lure Angel Dust and the Hasbin Hotel crew into a trap. Ah. Despite her imprisonment, Valentino and Vox took pleasure in tormenting Cherry, reveling in their control over her. Mm. However, Cherry's resilience and res uh, resourcefulness shone through, and she ultimately managed to escape her captors and played a crucial role in aiding, aiding Angel and the Hotel crew and temporarily defeating Valentino. Let's go, Cherry! Right. Charlie, on the other hand, her, Charlie. their relationship, they share a mutual disdain for one another, despite their limited direct interactions. Yep. Now, Valentino openly mocks Charlie, Charlie's idealistic mission to redeem sinners and to help them ascend to heaven. Of course. Uh, she can make them more rich than her... Papito. Her papito. I can make you more rich than your papito. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, he finds her efforts naive and laughable, often belittling her publicly. This disdain was evident when Valentino mocked her during her pitch for the Hasbin Hotel on the 666 News. Wow. Divertly laughing and calling her a dumb bimbo. Wow. He ridiculed the notion that any sinner would want to go to heaven or strive to become a better person. Inside of every sinner is a rainbow. Okay. Dismissing her entire initiative as foolish and unrealistic. Or is it demon? I think it was demon. Inside of know. every demon, there's a rainbow. I don't know. There's a rainbow inside of all of us. Yeah. Now, this tension between them escalated during the V's ambush of the Hasbin Hotel crew in Butchertown. Now, as Charlie tended her... Tended to her injured bodyguards, Razzle and Dazzle, Valentino seized the opportunity to attempt to kill her, aiming his revolver at her. However, this plan was thwarted by Angel Dust and Cherry Bomb. Angel Dust intervened by pushing Charlie out of the way, taking the bullet himself, though he was only injured in the leg. Oh, good. Cherry Bomb followed up by throwing an explosive at Valentino, knocking him down and damaging his coat, which is his wings. This incident... Uns underscored the stark differences in their ideologies and approaches into life in hell. Now, Valentino's relationship with Vaggy is characterized by his unrequited and lustful obsession, contrasted sharply with her intense disdain for him. Oh, very interesting. Now, Vaggy utterly despises Valentino, particularly for his abusive treatment of her friend Angel Dust. Now, she finds Valenti Valentino physically repulsive and morally repugnant. And she has a deep-seated loathing for how he mistreated Angel during his time working for him. Vaggy's empathy towards Angel stems from her own experiences with sexual abuse and manipulation. Which was no longer canon. I think it was retconned, yeah. Yes. Which makes her particularly sensitive to the sufferings he endured under Valentino's control. Now, she has often gone out of her way to comfort and support Angel, understanding the emotional... Uh, scars left by such experiences. On the other hand, Valentino is disturbingly attracted to Vaggy, mm. viewing her through a lustful lens. Mm. Despite this attraction, he also expresses a condescending disappointment towards her, primarily because he she associates with the Hasbin Hotel and its mission, which he views as foolish and beneath him. 
Valentino's perception of Vaggie is merely Charlie's sidekick further fuels his patronizing attitude, dismissing her capabilities and individuality. Hmm. Now, during the V's attack on the Hasbin Hotel, Valentino's twisted fascination with Vaggie became evident when he ordered Vovette to spare her. Valentino expressed his desire to, and I quote, make a worker out of her. Ooh, yucky, gross, disgusting. Yeah, indicating his intention to exploit Vaggie in the same way he had done with others under his control. This reveals Valentino's predatory nature as he sees Vaggie not only as an object of his desire, but also a potential asset to manipulate and use for his benefit. Now, Vaggie's utter contempt for Valentino and his la- lascivious obsession with her underscores a deep moral chasm between them. Mm. So, yeah. Now, that is really interesting. Yeah. Now, he has actually shown an interest in Alistair, <gasps> either as a potential business partner or lover. Whoa. Good luck barking up the wrong tree, my guy. Yeah, he expressed a belief that Alistair would eventually c- come to like him in Vox if they joined forces. Mm. However, Alistair has made it abundantly clear that he finds Valentino repugnant. Uh, also repugnant for this guy. Alistair outright rejected Valentino's offers for partnership and referred to him as, referred to him disdainfully as a pest and a bug. <laughs> Nice. His disdain, his taste for Valentino is rooted in his disgust with the moth demon's predatory behavior before his workers, towards his workers and downtrodden denizens of hell, which he, which even a sadistic figure like Alistair finds it, quote unquote, distasteful. <laughs> well, that's because Alistair has style. Okay. <laughs> Additionally, Alistair harbors animosity towards Valentino due to his association with Vox, who is a rival of him. Yes. In their first on-screen interaction, Valentino attempted to flirt with Alistair following a confrontation with Vox. Alistair's response was a direct and chilling threat, stating that he would dismember Valentino if he continued his advances. Nice. This underscore this interaction underscores the clear tension and hostility between the two. Now, despite Alistair's evident disdain and and the fact that he is considered more powerful than Valentino, he recognizes the Valentino the danger Valentino poses. Mm. Valentino's numerous connections, particularly his alliance with other v- powerful overlords like Vox and Velvet, make him a formidable adversary. As a result, Alistair generally avoids direct confrontations with Valentino, choosing only to engage if it involves invendi- defending the Hasbin Hotel or its staff. So, yeah. Now, his relationship with the Goetia Prince Stolas <sighs> is depicted in their Voxtagram accounts, is marked by mutual contempt and frequent arguments. Yes. Now, Valentino, known for his mocking and derisive behavior, ridiculed Stolas primarily for his relationship with Blitz. Right. Now, which is an affair that Valentino saw as beneath Stolas' status. Of course, that's what everybody thinks. Yeah. Now, he insulted the Goetia Goetia prince by calling him a, and I quote, dried up old man. (laughs) Suggesting that Stolas was unloved and undesirable. Terrible. Horrible. Valentino's jabs were intended to undermine Stolas's confidence and dignity, mm. me, mocking both his personal and emotional life. Stolas, however, did not take Valentino's insults lying down. Of course not. He often retaliated by attacking Valentino's pride, questioning his attempts to appear intimidating and criticizing his overall persona. Their interactions are marked by sharp exchanges and clear lack of respect for one another each trying to outdo the other with cutting remarks and insults. This ongoing feud highlights the animosity between them, with both characters unwilling to back down or show vulnerability. Now, Serpentius. He craved the attention and respect for Valentino and the other Vs, hoping to be recognized by the powerful overlords. However, Valentino consistently ignored and rebuffed Pentius, treating him with disdain and derision. Now, Valentino, like many others in hell, openly mocked Pentius, often dismissing him as an, and I quote, old man. Is that his only insult? Yeah, the only insult is old man. <laughs> Stolas, oh. you're an old man. Stolas, you're an old man. Sir Pentius, you man. are an old man. Alistair, oh, old, old man. man. <laughs> That's like, she only has one insult. So, this derogatory nickname was used to belittle Pentius 
undetermined under uh, under undermining his efforts to gain recognition and respect within the underworld's hierarchy. Mm. Now Valentino's behavior towards Serpentius exemplifies his tendency to demean those he perceives as lesser and unworthy of his attention, further uh, cementing his role as dismissive and arrogant feature figure among Hell's elite. And that we end our tale of Valentino. Wow. What a journey. So what do you think? Do, what parts of the of the unofficial lore would you like to see carried over to the official canon? Oh, man. Um, I'd really be interested in seeing more of his smoke powers. Okay. You know? I know that that's like a small thing and probably really stupid, but... I think that that would be really interesting to see, like him more like in battle, you know, being more uh, like obviously he's already really aggressive in the show, but I'd really like to see that applied to like a battleground. Okay. So. And like doing things like that. You wanted to get into like a, a, a flame war with Stolas? Yeah, exactly. I want Stolas to come into the Hasman Hotel and I want them to fight online. But they're in the same room, but they're doing it online. What? No. <laughs> like they're in the hotel together, but they're doing it online. Yeah, they're in the hotel together. <laughs> but they're online. Like they're in, like they're in front of each other they're on their phones. They're in front of each other on their phones, and they're like sending pictures to the boxagram, being like, "This old man." He's like, "This old man." That's he. He said one, <laughs> and then he went and he caught my thumb and a knickknack, petty whack, whack, and then he gave a dog a bone. <laughs> and Stolas is like moth. I, what was what was Stolas's like comeback? I don't. I don't know. I don't remember. So, what yeah, about you? What would you like to see? Carried? I would love to see his relationship with within with Angel Dust more. More in 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 this one. That you've heard it here, folks. He wants to see more abuse. No, I don't want to see more abuse. <laughs> I want to see Angel Dust defend himself. Defend and himself. And grow more, as a character more in the way that the unofficial lore Vox. did. Yes. Against, not Vox, not but Vox, sorry. Valentino. Valentino. I want to yes. see... I, you know what I don't want what? in the canon? The murder of Fat Nuggets? I do, one, I don't want the murder of Fat Nuggets. You're so right. I do not want that. Mm-hmm. I also do not want to see a canon relationship between Valentino and Velvet. Okay. I do not want that. Okay. I would also... I wouldn't mind seeing Alistair do some, like quick mumbo jumbo to get angel dust out of the contract love to see that too i think it'd also be really funny to see uh, valentino flirt with alistair and alistair would be like i'm going to rip you apart i'm going to rip you apart he doesn't go like he's not waluigi or anything that's true he's not Start I think it, it, would, it, it would be nice to see more of that sort of predatory personality like we get we get to see glimpses of it um, in the the club scene and in the scene where Charlie comes in to visit Angel um, about how he tries to recruit people. It'd be really nice to see that as well as his like certain obsessions with like the people that he views as quote unquote beautiful and like Would you appealing. like to see him like being like this weird obsessive person against Vaggie? I don't know if I would want to see that specifically. I think it would be really interesting plot wise to just him be like this this person yes okay i'll make a star I'm, i'll make a star i'm gonna make a worker out of her yeah so I, you know because the, the whole point about this is that you know they're in hell and they're meant to seem irredeemable but obviously the thing is is that charlie is correct and that redemption is possible mm-hmm. and I just really want to see more of these skeevy personalities, you know? Like, obviously what we have, it's still pretty skeevy, but it is a little muted compared to what happens in the Mm non-canon. Which makes sense because there's only so much that can be allowed on streaming services and like Amazon Prime and that sort of thing. Yeah. But I mean, it would be really nice if we got to see more of that, like, pushing like obviously i i don't 
it's always really difficult when you include things that are like hot button topics mm-hmm. like rape, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're bad people, mm-hmm. so it would make sense that they do things like that. I don't necessarily want to see it, but it would be interesting if that was kind of touched on. What you, we see it in the um, in the attic music video, we see glimpses of it. Uh, but the show mainly um, stays away from that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, although there is that one time where Angel almost gets drugged. <laughs> oh yeah, but by Huss, those people, but, but Huss, Huss, Huss saves him. Huss saves him. Even though you know he was he was doing it on purpose, like mm-hmm. he was gonna get drugged on purpose. Yeah, and then he's all like, "It's not an act." This is what I have to do to get through the day. This is what I have to do to get through the day. You're a loser. <laughs> okay. You're a loser, goddamn baby. You can't say that. I can. You can't say that. Is it those song lyrics? So anyway, um, that's pretty much it about Valentino. We, it. we covered a lot about what, what. So we what what would you how would you compare? Un- non-canon Valentino with canon Valentino. I think you asked me this already. But now with that, yeah, earlier. But now with, but now with everything that I know, not the what, what, what I know, um, I still stand by what I said earlier in that they are both bad, and I don't like either of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you like it. one better than the other? Do I like one better than no? I think they're both terrible. Like equally terrible. I, I think, think they're both. Worse. I I sure maybe one is worse, but that doesn't mean I like the other one better. Okay. I think that they are both bad. Okay. For yeah, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the entire thing about Valentino. I mean, we talked about him, and there was a lot to say, and I think he is bad. That's right. No fan. No fan. No fan art. Do not ship. <laughs> Do not ship. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I've been Nathaniel Avila. And I've been Clara Avila. And we'll see you guys next time. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to A Vision Podcast, home of wacky talkies, the kingdom, evil exists, and many more.